this is just to kind of fill in, just to explicitly get a few notes related to some of the other operators, as well as to give you a little bit of an extension beyond the scope of like the AP curriculum to have a deeper understanding about a couple of these operators, which may help you um, interpret some other code you'll see and potentially avoid some unexpected behavior. So let's create another static method called extra operators example. It's just a place to capture some of this, these notes. Um, so first things, there are a set of operators called augmented assignment operators. And we've been using these just naturally for a while. What I mean by augmented assignment operators are plus equal, minus equal, star equal for multiplication and assignment, slash equal for division and assignment, and mod equal. Some good news. These are the same as in Python. Okay. Um, what do they actually do? Well, they perform the specified mathematical operation involving the left ah, click, involving the left operand, which has to be a variable, and the right operand, which can be any arbitrary expression. But after it performs that operation, it then assigns the resulting value to the same variable. So here, here are some examples. I, I really like the augmented assignment operators because I think they're easier to read. Um, and when people read your code, it makes more sense um, than some other ways. So let's say if we want, let's say we have three variables, all with a value of seven, x, y, z all of a value of seven. We want to add one to each of those three variables. There's three ways we can do this in Java. We can say x equals x plus one. That's simply using the addition and the assignment operator. And this works. Um, I have found that for students new to programming, that line of code is not easy to understand. Um, this x equals x plus one. There's a lot of abstraction going on there. The variable x on the right side of the equation, it's being used as we want to get its current value. We're going to add one to that value. And then the x on the left side of the equal sign means, and then we're going to store it in back in that same variable. I know we're used to that at this point, but for a new Programmers, I think it's it's confusing. I think writing code like this, y plus equals one, makes a lot more sense. When I see a line of code like that, I read it in my head is, we are gonna increment the value of y by one. Oh, that makes, makes a lot of sense. Adding or subtracting one to a variable is so common in programming that in Java, there's actually another operator just to do that and it's the plus plus operator. So z plus plus will increment the value of z by one. Um, we will use that a ton coming up in chapter six. So let's write a statement to print all these values out so you can run this code and actually verify all three variables have a value of eight. So x will equal the value of x y will equal value of y, z will equal value of z. So type this, compile this, run this, verify that x, y, and z do in fact all have a value of 8 after that code runs.
in reality, this is all you really need to know um, in terms of operators that we haven't already learned before. That said, one thing I just want to give you kind of a little bit of an extension and dive a little bit deeper into um, or is this new operator of this plus plus operator. Because you may remember when we defined what an operator was, we say all operators return a value. And here we're doing Z plus plus, which if it returns a value, we're not doing anything with it, which is fine. But we should at least be aware of what is the value that that is returned. So this Z++ um, is an example of what's called the post increment and there's a decrement to operator. So this is plus plus or minus minus either of them. They're called post increment because well we'll, we'll define it here. Um, So these operators are equivalent to adding or subtracting one to or from the variable. Here's why they're called a post increment or post decrement operator. What these operators do is these return the value of the variable before performing the increment or the decrement. That's why it's referred to as the post increment or decrement. So here's an example to make that more concrete. If we say int a equals 7 and int b equals a plus plus, and then we print these out, we'll print the value of a, we'll print the value of b, and when you type compile and run this, you're going to see that, sure, a has been incremented and has a value of 8 as we would expect it, but the value of b is 7. And that may not be expected, and that's why I want you to have a slightly deeper understanding of how this post increment operator works. Because this operator is doing multiple things, and the order in which it does it is important. So this line of code, b equals a plus plus, first we take the current value of a and return that, meaning it's going to get assigned to b, then a is incremented by 1. That's why b ends up with a value of 7, and a ends up with a value of 8. And that may be what we want, and that can be useful. Um, but honestly, mo most of the time, when we use the post increment operator, we don't care about the return value at all, so we don't really, it doesn't matter. But I want you to just be aware of that. If this is not the behavior we want, if we actually would want B to have the updated value of A, that is we want the assignment to occur after the increment occurs, there's, there's actually another operator for that that's in Java as well. And it's called, not too surprisingly, the pre-increment or decrement operator. Same symbols. The only difference is that these return the value after performing the increment or the decrement. So with an example, similar example, if we say C equals 7 and D equals plus plus C, so it's called the pre-increment and the, the plus plus operator goes before the variable. This is to give us like kind of the syntax clue that, oh, we're going to increment first and then return the value um, instead. And we could print this out to verify the values of C and D. So we'll print the value of C, print the value of D. C will still be 8 as expected, but we're going to see that D is now 8 as well. You're not going to see anything on the AP Computer Science exam that deals with what value is returned from a post or pre-increment or decrement. Um, so don't worry about that part. 
from that reason, but you may write code like this and you need to be aware of the behavior. Um, or you might see code that uses the return value of the pre or post increment and you should be aware of the behavior. In my experience, I see the post increment used a lot, but usually in isolation where we don't care about the return value. It is very rare to see the pre um, increment or decrement operator used in Java, in my experience. Um, in C programs, uh, it seems to be more, more prevalent. I think perhaps they're a little more pedantic about when to use post and pre. Um, but in Java, I don't really see the pre increment very often at all. So.